Oh, hello, this is Tak Chung from Walk with Tak. Welcome to my YouTube channel. The goal of my YouTube channel is to help you to make home cooking part of your daily routine so you can cook from scratch using all fresh ingredients. And the reason is very simple because we are not evolved to eat fast and ultra processed food. Its overconsumption is directly related to the obesity epidemic and the related chronic diseases. And using the fast cooking system, you can make home cooking practical, efficient, creative, and fun. And the most important aspect of the cooking system is that to allow you to create varieties in your dishes using different kinds of food ingredients. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to stir fry lamb. I'm going to use a loin roast. Now, lamb is actually is a wonderful meat, and we don't eat very much because there's not a lot of lamb being consumed in this country. But lamb has great flavor, and I enjoy lamb very much. So I got this lamb loin roast, which was on sale for the holiday, and I decided I'm going to try it, see whether I can stir fry it. Now I have done some stir fry with lamb before, but I've never tried it with a roast. So the first thing is that I'm going to cut the roast into thin slices. And I know if I cut them in the thin slices, uh, they probably will stir fry well. Now, one thing about lamb is that uh, in this particular cut, there's quite a bit of fat associated with it. And I decided I'm going to keep the fat because I think the fat will actually add great flavor uh, to the stir fry dish. So the first thing I'm doing here is that I'm going to cut it into as thin slices as I possibly can. The size of the pieces actually is not that important, but the thickness is crucial. If you cut it into thin slices, not only that it's going to cook faster, and most likely that it will be also more tender. Here I purchased two pounds of this lamb, and it comes in a loin which wrap up for roasting. After I look at the pieces, I decided that this might actually would stir fry really well. I prep this lamb in the same way as I prep my beef. Uh, so I store them uh, in Ziploc sandwich bag. I store them in 8 ounce portions. Uh, this will allow me to use it mainly as a condiment rather than as a main ingredient. It actually will help me to flavor the dish. So I can use this in combination with different kinds of vegetables. Again, using a basic template, I can create many different possible variations. Some vegetable might work a little bit better than the others. I prep them in 8 ounce portions and using this method, I'm able to thaw them out uh, usually in about 10 minutes in a bowl of lukewarm water. I'm going to cook this dish using my Cuisina 14 inch standard steel wok. I'm going to start out with about 2 tablespoons of canola oil. Now I want to heat up the oil as much as possible because this is the way for me to sear the meat. And so in this case, uh, I try to get the wok as hot as I can before I add the oil. Uh, this will shorten the time that I require to heat up the oil. However, you need to be very careful uh, because when the oil gets close to the smoking point, it will start to smoke. And at this point, you want to turn down the temperature of the stove uh, so that the oil do not get uh, out of control. Uh, but no matter what, it is important to get the oil as hot as you can. Uh, this will actually will cook the meat much better. And this is a strategy that I have used for cooking many other kinds of meat. So basically, you can consider this as a basic template. Uh, I use a pair of tongs uh, to transfer the lamb onto the wok. Uh, now, there's one thing very important is that make sure your lamb is as dry as possible uh, because if it is wet, first of all, it will reduce the temperature uh, when you add it to the wok. And secondly, it will cause a lot of splashing. You notice that the meat turned uh, almost immediately in color, which means that it's cooked very rapidly. At this point, I turned down the heat to about medium or medium low so to prevent the meat from overcooking. Now the whole idea is that I want to cook the meat to probably I would say maybe a medium well and I want to still have a little bit red uh, because I'm going to add it to the uh, vegetable later on and then we'll finish it from cooking. If you would like it rare, uh, you can stir fry it a little bit less. And the lamb is done. It took about 40 seconds to cook it, so you have to be really careful. I'm going to set it aside. And next, I'm going to cook the eggplant. Uh, I just add eggplant directly to the wok. 
uh, there's still some oil in it. So I'm going to uh, use the oil to cook the eggplant. But one thing about eggplant is that it absorbs oil readily. As you can tell, uh, by now most of the oil on the surface of the wok has been uh, absorbed by the eggplant. So now I'm going to add a little bit more cooking oil because otherwise the eggplant is going to get burned. Okay, now uh, next I'm going to add the king oyster mushroom. The king oyster mushroom takes about the same amount of time as the eggplant to cook. And then I also add some broccoli. Now broccoli take a little bit less time to cook. This is the reason why I add it at a later time. At the difference in about 15 to 20 seconds will allow me to cook the eggplant a little bit longer. And one of the greatest advantage of stir frying is that it allows you to control the texture of the ingredients by adding them at different time points. Ingredients that you would like to cook longer, you can add them earlier. And ingredients that you only want to cook for a shorter amount of time, uh, you can add them later during the cooking process. This method is really good in allow you to cook all the ingredients to the same texture, so you can cook them with to the right doneness. If you add all the ingredients at the same time, then the ingredients that require longer time to cook might not be cooked properly. On the contrary, ingredients that require shorter time to cook uh, might be overcooked. So this control is very important. And this is frequently known as sequential stir-frying, means that you stir-fry different ingredients in a sequence. And next, I add the portobello mushroom. The reason again, portobello mushroom requires shorter time to cook. Now all the ingredients are pretty much there and at this point I add a little bit more cooking oil. I always keep my cooking oil in a squeeze bottle because this will allow me to add precise amount as I want. It is a good idea to only add the cooking oil that you need in the cooking process. This will allow you to use only a minimum amount of cooking oil. A different food ingredients has different requirements for cooking oil. For example, eggplant tend to absorb more cooking oil, and mushroom is the same way. But if you compare the king oyster mushroom and the portobello mushroom, uh, you will notice that the portobello mushroom will need more cooking oil. So this adjustment is important, and by having your cooking oil in a squeeze bottle, it will allow you to add whatever amount that you need uh, any time you want. I'm going to add a small amount of water to make a sauce. And the reason I add the water at this point also, I noticed that some of the food ingredients had burned to the bottom surface of the wok. They will be difficult to clean in the sink. However, it is easily removed by adding water at this time. Because the water basically, like a steam, it will help dissolve those burned material. And then you can use the wok spatula to scrape them off. And this method is also useful uh, to return some of the flavor back to the dish. I find this method extremely useful uh, in cleaning the wok uh, by depositing the water exactly over the area where the burn material is located. You can easily remove them uh, using your wok spatula. Now, a lot of these are little techniques that I have learned over the years, and it makes your cooking more efficient. And it is something that worthwhile to take notice, and you will soon develop your own approach. I'm going to season the dish with about two tablespoons of oyster sauce. Again, you can use whatever amount that you will like. And then I'm also going to season it with about one tablespoon of hoisin sauce. And the combination of these two sauces will uh, create a teriyaki like flavor. And you can adjust the sweetness of the sauce by adjusting the amount of uh, oyster sauce versus hoisin sauce. If you like it to be less sweet, then just put a small amount of hoisin sauce. And next is to add the lamb to the wok. A few quick mix, the dish is done. Uh, this method is frequently known as combinatorial stir frying. I stir fry the lamb separately so I can control the texture of the lamb so that I will not overcook it. And now I can combine them together. Now this dish is created to go over a pan fried noodles. And the pan fried noodles that I use for this dish is a spaghetti pasta noodles. And it turned out to be really a great way to use the spaghetti pasta noodles. And it gives the noodles a very nice crispy flavor. This dish is very fast to cook. As you can see that the lamb took only about seconds to cook. 
and the lamb actually turned out to be really tender, very, very nice, and it provides a nice uh, addition flavor to the dish. And that's why I use the lamb predominantly as a condiment rather than as a main ingredient and to season the dish. The final step is that I add some scallion that I cut in strip to lay over the dish. It gives the dish a nice onion flavor as well as uh, provide a nice crunchy texture. So as you can see that this dish is very fast, straightforward and simple to cook. And cooking the lamb is basically use the basic template that I use for cooked beef. Both the lamb and beef cook rapidly, so you have to really keep an eye on it while you're cooking the dish. And this dish took only about 6 minutes to cook. Because advanced prepping, I have all the ingredients already in the refrigerator ready for me to use. And with uh, flavor chasing, I'm able to adjust the flavor to exactly uh, what I would prefer. So if you'd like to learn more about my fast cooking system, uh, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. So keep on cooking. I will see you tomorrow.